I don't want to get to like, this is what you should do. Because <laughs> what worked for me isn't necessarily what's going to work for you. Like if somebody would have told me to do something back then, like I would have been like, fuck you. Like, I'm just, don't tell me what to fucking do. Like I'll do whatever the fuck I want. There was a period of time, probably like 92 to 95, and I was really doing tons of drugs and a lot of alcohol. Machine Head was banned from three clubs in the Bay Area for fighting. Everywhere we went, we just wreaked havoc and were basically assholes. At that point in my life, you know, early, mid-20s, I just totally turned it in on myself. It was just me against the world. I was a cutter when I was a kid, started doing that again. I'm adopted, and so it brought up all of this abandonment issues, and I really just got really self-destructive about it. Somewhere in that time, I had gotten into bulimia. My headspace was, well, I don't want to be hungover tomorrow, so I should just throw up the fucking 25 shots that I just did. Oh man, I ate too much food at dinner. Lots of justifying and lots of excuses. But it was all based around my own you know, self-esteem. All of that kind of self-destruction that I was going through around more things change, around 97. I just, I kind of went into a tailspin and I was like, I need to do something. I need to do something. I started doing therapy around 1998. It didn't help me in the sense that it made anything go away, but it, it gives you coping skills to help you see, oh wait, okay, I'm doing that thing. You know, I'm going back to these old things that I went to or whatever. It was a huge eye-opening experience. I still do it, so 20 years. You know, they call it peeling the onion. You're just peeling layers away. <laughs> it's a painful experience, man. You're just opening up scabs and you're just sifting through maggots and you're just like, fuck. And yeah, it definitely poured itself into the burning red. It was a very, very painful look at my life, my past, my childhood. And it kind of just was this big tug of war. You know, it was like that in the record. It was like that on the tour, you know, where I'd kind of take, you know, one step forward, two step back. I would love to say, hey, you should do this. I think everybody should fucking do it. But it's the type of thing where unless you really want to do it, unless you're ready to do it, it's, it's useless to do. You've got to reach a point in your life where you've reached such a low that you do it because you have to change. I couldn't sum up what a fan has said to me in a sound bite, but had some really heavy conversations, some amazing conversations and horrifying conversations. It was like a struggle that we had both gone through and it was a thing that we had both survived and there was this energy that was transferred and that was probably the most intense part of it. Have I risen above this? Have I overcome my struggle? Like, I feel just fucking lost most of the time. You know, you gotta figure it out. We all gotta figure it out. I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm still trying to figure it out. I just, I just do my thing. Music helps a lot. I'm just trying to figure it out along the way with everybody. And I can deal with that. And that's to me what life is. I never thought that I'd get out of the fucking Bay Area. I grew up in San Lorenzo. And I grew up three blocks away from the trailer park that my dad lived in. You know, so it is never lost on me. Come a fucking long way, Rob Flynn. Pretty fucking cool. Oh.